Learn how to create really engaging SharePoint intranets through this step-by-step -step video in which I'm going to guide you on how to exactly build a SharePoint intranet homepage as well as department sites and sites that will effectively communicate information to your wider organization. This will be a three-part video in which you'll be able to learn exactly how to create this internet from scratch, step by step, guided by myself every step of the way. The agenda of this video looks a little bit like this. We're going to be first looking at designing out an internet. Now, I like to be quite a, a visual designer, so I like to go and look at examples of internets that other people have previously created to give me a bit of food for thought when it comes to designing my own intranets. So let's make a start and jump in and talk about designing an intranet. So first, let's look at some areas that we can see examples of SharePoint. So quite commonly, um, I would see people just going to Google um, and potentially just typing in something like SharePoint intranet examples. Um, and then if you go into images, you can find a whole host of different um, ideas for your SharePoint intranet. Now this is quite good, but if you're a complete beginner to SharePoint, I would advise you be very careful of this because you might find there's a lot of examples in here which is using some third party products um, or custom code, which isn't necessarily available to you out of the box. If you've got your heart set on something, um, which is a design, you might find that actually it's from a third party provider, which is going to want to charge you for an additional license. So instead, a second way of doing this is to Google SharePoint Lookbook. Go to the SharePoint Lookbook, which is an official Microsoft website, and then click on See Examples. Now, this gives you loads of different ideas and looks and feels, and they are all 100% native SharePoint. So there's no need to worry about custom code or anything like that. They even categorize the tabs across the top. So, for example, organization, these are essentially SharePoint internet homepages. So you can get a good idea of what an internet homepage could look like from this. Or you could look at department sites. So what particular department sites may look like. And, and so on, in terms of um, different communities, solutions, and school-related SharePoint sites. So this is a great place to get a bit of food for thought about what um, you like and you don't like. And, and at the end of the day, SharePoint is all kind of um, drag and drop to a certain extent. So it might be something you like of one design um, and like something else of another design, and then you could merge them two together to create your own design. Also, as you're watching this on YouTube, why not just search YouTube for SharePoint internet examples? Obviously, you'll find me here, my top video, which is 10 tips to design a SharePoint intranet, and that'll give you more ideas about what you could be using your SharePoint intranet to do, and some generic design tips. Um, there's also my video here from uh, my company um, that I currently work for called Vata IT. Um, and there's a great video here, of, again, more internet examples and designs and templates. Um, also, if you're interested in department site designs, there's some examples of SharePoint site designs in here as well. So go check those videos out. They're really useful. And again, it'll help you um, start coming up with ideas of what your intranet could potentially look like. So back into the SharePoint lookbook, I quite like this design in terms of having a section down the right hand side and a bit of content across the top. Um, but actually, I think it's something closer to this that I actually want to um, emulate. So I'm looking at this and I know that this is a slideshow um, and there is going to be a section down the right hand side. So this is almost like where I'm going to start off my kind of idea. It isn't essentially the content that I want to use or even the, the end web parts I'm going to use, but it gives me a bit of an idea about the direction I'm heading in. So now if I open up PowerPoint, I can start to wireframe out a little bit of ideas that I want to use. So if I click on insert across the top, and that, this might just be just out of shot for you. There's an insert tab across the top, click on shapes, and it's not gonna be overly fancy. So um, I'm just gonna click on right, uh, rectangle, and I'm, I'm going to think about the overall arching design of the page. So I'm going to have a kind of, sort of body section like this, and I'm actually just gonna change the background color of this um, just to remove the fill, just because I'm designing, whoops, the uh, 
layout here. So I'm going to have a kind of uh, section on the right hand side, which is on my secondary kind of area. So then I can start thinking about um, what am I going to have in this design. So this is going to be my, and, and this isn't a scale. Again, I'm just literally just creating this as a high level proof of concept because it's much quicker to change this than it is to go through uh, doing it all inside of SharePoint. And it just gives us an idea um, of what content is going to live where. So um, this is going to be my um, slideshow, for example. So I'm just going to type into this box and I'm going to put um, org news uh, slideshow. So this is going to be news which is um, relevant to everybody, um, no matter what department and things like that that you're in. So that's going to be my org news. Um, then on the right hand side, um, let, let us think about some ideas of what can go into this right hand side. So let's go back into our SharePoint lookbook. I'm just looking around a couple of different designs in here. Um, and actually, I, I had a bit of a kind of idea. I've seen here on the right hand side that they're using this quick links web part next to this video. And that got me thinking, actually, maybe I should have some quick links on the right hand side to my video. Sorry, I mean slideshow. Um, because actually balancing the first top area of your SharePoint internet, essentially what they refer to as above the fold when you're designing websites, is really important that it should maybe have a mix of two things, dynamic content, news and things like that to hook people in to be interested, but also for people who want to quickly access things and jump out to key areas of the internet, they're looking for kind of eye-catching navigation. So maybe let's put some quick links there. So back in my wireframe, I've just put in a block here to say that there'll be some quick links here, linking out to some key things that I know that people would want to access from my intranet, things like leave requests, expense requests, and viewing policies. But that could also be maybe um, looking for templates or forms, for example. Um, so there's all sorts of different things people might want to quickly be able to navigate to. Um, I I'm not gonna go through the full sort of workshopping here because we'll be here all day if, if I come up with a load of ideas of what is going to be into this wireframe. But I would suggest that you do go through the process of um, filling this out and just talking to people about what the, the kind of layouts will be just so um, everyone's on the same page before you start building. I mean, a, another common thing um, that you often get with inside of intranets is the ability to have um, sort of buttons or what we refer to as call to actions. Um, so in this design, what I'm thinking I might do is I might have some call to actions directly underneath um, my slideshow. So I'm just going to put these a couple of different areas. Again, it's not to scale, so I'm not going to worry too much about um, the, the sort of layout and things like that right now. Um, but these will be my, say, call to actions. So I'll just change this text here. So again, it might not be that I desire, I think right now what my call to action is going to be, but I know that that's where the, the space is going to be. Now, it might be that these link off again to sort of key things inside of my intranet, um, maybe some more prominent things um, which didn't make it into here, but we wanted to visualize with a background image and some text which sit on top of these call to actions. Again, just go through and flesh this out and just think about what is going to be on um, the internet and just put together an idea. As I say, it's much quick and easy. If you just want to scrap this, you can remove these, no time lost. It's conceptualizing it and it's a good way of sitting down with people to think about actually what is going to be on this internet and then start that kind of um, process of thinking about, well, who's going to create the content for this? Because again, when you're coming up with these designs, it's all well and good thinking, well, let's have a, a slideshow of news here, but who's going to create the news? Who, who's going to own creating that news process? Because again, if, if you're thinking, I'm only going to create one news article a month, then that starts thinking about, well, what should the design look like? Because if I show, say, five news articles in a slideshow, then there's going to be five months worth of news articles sliding around this, which might be too much. So you might want to then only show, say, three news articles in that slideshow. So you've only got three months or a quarter's worth of news sliding around. And again, that applies to all of these other content areas, thinking about who's going to create these news articles or, or what content's going to be rolled up. 
um, make sure that you don't end up with a stagnant looking internet homepage because the content is too outdated. You're showing too much content to what is being freshly created. We'll come back to this thought later on inside the video. So let's pretend now we've finished our wireframe, we've created our wireframe and we're now ready to start building. We now need to go to the SharePoint Admin Center to create our SharePoint site and enable it as a hub site. Now, to do this, you will need to have the SharePoint Admin role inside of SharePoint. Um, I do have a video which um, I can link inside of the description of this video, which explains more about the SharePoint access roles and permissions. So you can find out exactly what you need to do to get access. Once you've got that access though, we need to navigate to the SharePoint Admin Center. You can do this by going to office.com, which is a homepage of Microsoft 365, and then click on admin on the left hand side. Once this page loads, it will show you all of the admin centers that you have access to um, underneath this show all. So you click on show all, and then we've got SharePoint. Once you get into SharePoint's admin center, we then need to look um, to be able to create a new site, which we can do by clicking on active sites to see all the sites we currently have, and then we can click on create. Once we click on create, it's gonna say, well, what type of site do we want to create? Now, because we're building out an intranet um, and that it is a, technically a communication site, we're gonna select communication site. We then need to give it a site name. Now, you can call this whatever you like. And in fact, actually, I would recommend as part of the process of building out your intranet, you actually go and ask your end users what they want the internet to be called. Because if you've got buy-in at the early stages of this, it'll make the adoption of the new internet much easier. So maybe consider doing a survey, a poll, a questionnaire type of thing to ask people what they think they want to call it. Um, and no, internet, internet face <laughs> shouldn't necessarily be the answer. Um, but you'd be surprised there could be all sorts of meaningful uh, names that people recognize and it makes it much easier to kind of if the internet has got its own kind of brand identity it's much easier for someone to say oh and go and check um, the hub site or go and check the landing um, for that type of content or information related to policies for example it makes it much easier for people to refer to it now I'm just going to call this the hub um, Microsoft refer to these as hub sites. It just makes it a bit easier if you call it the hub because then if you ever need to Google anything, you can Google SharePoint hub site um, or go on YouTube and type in SharePoint hub site rather than having to um, figure out what, exactly what it is. You're going to find more content if you, if you refer to it as a hub. Um, so the site owner, I'm then just going to type in my name into here. Um, and then um, English is fine, but just make sure that you set your time zone in here because the time zone will change things like the date formats inside of uh, SharePoint. Um, so I'm just gonna set mine to be uh, London and then click on finish. So this is now gonna create me my SharePoint site and it will do this using the out of the box communication site. Um, which we'll see in a minute has a, a very distinct type of layout, which we're then going to start building on top of. Um, the next thing I need to do though is I need to enable this to be a hub site because I'm going to create in future videos department sites which are going to link to this hub site to do things like inheriting the branding, um, to share a, a central navigation, and to roll up content from those department sites onto my internet homepage. So if I then select um, this tab, I can then click on um, bu -bu 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 hub and then click on register as hub site. So it's gonna say, well, who can associate to this? So I'm just gonna say, um, it's gonna be myself and then click on save. So now we've created our site as a hub site and um, we, we, we are now ready to go. So all we now need to do is click on this link, which is gonna take us to um, my SharePoint site. And I know that it's got a, a hub site enabled because I can see this hub navigation bar is already um, popping up across the top. So um, it also will allow me to uh, apply some templates. So if, if you wanted to speed up this process or you don't want to have it too much of your own bespoke design, you can click on browse templates. And what this will do is it will show you some out of the box templates that SharePoint has to offer. 
um, and by selecting them, it will automatically apply that template across the top uh, across the top of your site. It will also deploy some um, basic uh, content as well to fill out those spaces. Now we've got our, our SharePoint uh, site created. Um, let's take a little look actually starting to build out the, the kind of the layout of this. So I'm going to start off by clicking the edit button across the top right hand corner. Now you'll notice now I'm in edit mode. Everything's kind of got, I'm just getting rid of this pop out. Everything's kind of got a kind of, um, a sort of boxes around it when I hover over the different web parts on the page. In fact, I can come out of this full view um, by clicking this little arrow across the top here, because I just like to keep that navigation across the top to, to keep kind of perspective on what the, the page looks like. So these are, so the web parts on the page are actually sitting inside of what we call sections. So this is a web part, this is a news web part, sitting inside of a, a page section. Now a section always goes from left to right, um, and then you add web parts inside of that section um, by hovering over um, sort of content areas, and you can see a little plus button appears to be able to add in a web part. So thinking back to our wireframe where we had content on the right, uh, on the left hand side and content on the right hand side, we now need to build out that section. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of start from scratch here by just removing all of these sections, so just deleting the sections, selecting them. On the left hand side, this is your section um, menu bar, so I can click on delete section. That gives me a completely white blank page. Now I'm going to create my sections by clicking on this plus button across the top left hand corner. Now these are all the different types of layouts that you've got. So you've got a one column section, a two column section, three column section, a one third left, a one third right, a full width section, which is like that large tile web part that we saw that filled the whole space. Or we've got this vertical section here. Now this is the one I'm going to pick so that I get my content on the left hand side, but I've also got this secondary um, sort of bar on the right hand side. And the reason why I select that rather than the two columns is because with the vertical section, we can actually change the background color of this section as well. Whereas with two columns, you can't. It's all just seen as one section. This is technically almost like two sections in one section. Cool, so now we've got this, we now need to start adding web parts to this page. So to add a web part is really simple. We can click on this little plus button here and you can see there's all sorts of different web parts we could add to this page. So we've got things like text. If we just wanted to add a little bit of text, we can add a text web part. If we wanted to add, um, say a button, we can just add say a little button here click me and we've got a link in and we've got a simple button. Now there's all sorts of different web parts in here. And again, this isn't a full tutorial of what is every last web part inside of SharePoint. Um, but I will suggest as we kind of go through this, some great examples. So you're going to see some great examples of web parts I'm using to build out this intranet. Um, but if you've got time, do go through and just take a little look at all sorts of different web parts which live inside of here. So like that large tile uh, sort of web part we looked at earlier called Hero um, is a great way of having um, navigation built into your SharePoint homepage. Um, we've got things like um, Quick Links, which we're going to use in a second um, to have on the, the right hand side. Or you can even embed YouTube videos if you wanted to. Um, so I'm going to start off with um, just adding... Uh, my news web part here and I don't have any content yet the reason why I've added the news web part is because if you remember I want to have that slideshow that carousel now um, we are going to talk a bit more about news later on to, to explain this a little bit further but first I'm just going to create the layout of my page so I'm going to select this carousel web part also, I'm going to choose to remove the title and commands from the top because I don't want them to appear across the top of this uh, page. Um, so that's now got my news slider there. It's got no content, um, but we're going to come to look at that shortly. Then I'm going to add onto this um, my um, uh, quick links because this is where I want my navigation to appear on the right hand side. Um, again, um, I'm just going to call this my, um, say, you can call it whatever you like. So maybe rather than quick links, maybe call it useful links. Um, and then we can start adding links to this um, as well. So I click on add links, and maybe let's just say um, for now, I'm just going to link to Microsoft.com. Click on add. 
and then that will then add me my link. So um, let's just do that a couple more times. And this could be links to SharePoint pages. It could be links to third-party websites. Whatever you've got a hyperlink URL that you want um, to send things to. Then um, we're going to design this so we can have a slightly different layout because we can have things like the compact view, uh, film strip, grid, things like that. But what I think looks really nice is this button layout. Especially when I publish the page, you'll see that this should nicely, once we've got the right amount of um, links here, it should, it should fit. Maybe one more uh, link in there is the trick. Um, but once we've got the right amount of links in there, it will actually sit really nicely on the page next to my slideshow. There we go. So that's the right amount of useful links. So all these later on, we're going to change the content. So these are linking out and we're going to change these icons as well um, in the part two video. Um, so we're going to take a look at uh, sort of putting out a bit more content into this later on. So make sure that you um, sign up for the membership so you can see part two um, to building out the rest of this home page and what other web parts that I recommend. But for now, um, let's talk a bit about the news, so how we create news. So we can create news really simply by clicking on the new button and then click on news post. Um, now this is creating news on this particular page. In part three, we're going to talk about creating department sites and creating news on department sites which can roll up onto the internet homepage. Now news will always come from whatever site that you create it from. So it will show up, say for example I create a department site called Human Resources, if I create the news article there and roll it up onto my hub site it will show that it was originally created from the Human Resources site. So it's a great way of segmenting where your news is actually created. Um, so if I click on news, we've got news post and we've got news link. Now news post is a way of creating um, news yourself, creating your own articles, whereas news link is is essentially where you can put in a link to a news article on a third party web page and it'll automatically pull through the preview image, uh, the text, and then when someone clicks on it, it'll bounce them through to that third party page. So if I click on news post, Um, you can see here there's actually a bunch of different templates that you can you can use. So we've got things like blank news, we've got newsletter, we've got events, we've got status update, process, topic. There's loads of different templates which Microsoft give you out of the box. But um, to start off with, I'm just actually going to click on this blank news. Then click on um, create post. So this is then going to give me a blank news article. So I can change... Um, the look and feel up here with this little drop down. So I can either have um, image uh, with a title, I can have it plain like it is to start off with, I could have a color block, or I could have it overlapping if I wanted to. Um, I'm just going to actually start off with it plain. So um, actually, tell a lie. Um, let's, let's go a bit more interesting. Let's say image and title. So I'm going to say this is, um, say, welcome Joe Blogs to. Um, the company. So this can be a news article about welcoming uh, Joe Bloggs. So I'm going to say this week we, whoops, we welcome Joe Bloggs to the company. Now, what's worth mentioning is that the first piece of text that SharePoint finds will be used as that kind of um, thumbnail summary that shows up on the home page um, with your news web part. Um, the title will also be used. Say, for example, in my image slider, the title will be used um, as the uh, sort of what's going to be shown in the slideshow. Whereas if I'm using some of the other web parts with text thumbnails, it's going to be this first piece of text. It's also worth mentioning that the images uh, which are being used uh, as the, the, the background of this um, news page is also going to be the thumbnail image which is used on the roll-up. Now to change that, I can just click on browse images and I'm actually, I could upload my own imagery or I could use this stock imagery. Now I'm gonna talk a bit more about the stock imagery in part two as well. So I'm not gonna to go too much into this, but I can search this um, for, let's say for example, um, pictures of offices. So let's just say um, this guy is gonna be Joe Bloggs. We'll select him, click on insert, 
and that will then change the background image. Once we're happy with our news article, we can click on post, and that is then going to post this. Now, I can also choose to send this out um, uh, as an email as well. So if I wanted to, um, I could say, who do I want to send it to um, with a message? So I can send this out as an email if I wanted to. Now, this isn't the same as a newsletter, but this is a great way of promoting um, this particular news article. Once we've posted it, though, it will then appear um, inside of our new slideshow. Now, I've only got one news article now, so it's not going to slide through. It's only going to show me the news article um, that I have got created. Then finally, we can create a newsletter inside of SharePoint really easily. Um, and the way we do this is we need to navigate to the sort of SharePoint summary page um, for our news article articles. Now, if we were using a news web part which had more news articles than what it could display on the page, you would get a see all option appear on, on the top. Because I've only got one news article, it's not gonna show up. So instead, what I can do is I can add this URL uh, snippet to the end of my URL. So just paste this after the name of your intranet. So mine's the hub, forward slash layouts, forward slash 15, forward slash news.aspx, and it takes you to this page. I can then create my newsletter by clicking on this email and news digest. Now, if I had multiple different um, news articles here, I could select more than one news article. I can then click on next, and that takes me through to the next page, which I can give my news article a name. So I'm, this might be, say, for example, my winter newsletter. I can specify who I want to send this to. So this could be one or multiple people. And then what I want the text to say. So I could say, this is some text. Now, the benefits of a newsletter is you're going to be reaching a target audience, which may be getting their news at the moment via an email. Um, it also means that you're going to be promoting your intranet to those people that maybe are not going to adopt it so easily because they've still got their head inside of Outlook and emails and things like that. Whereas what this will do is when we click on the Send News Digest, it's going to send them an email with that summary text, a rough kind of summary of, of these uh, news articles that we've selected, and then a click through so you can go directly to that SharePoint site. You can see more details, more information, and you're going to build your traffic um, going directly to your intranet. So you're getting an audience of people that may not necessarily usually use an intranet because, um, they're uh, again, they've got their head inside of emails, and you're getting them out of the emails and into SharePoint. Then when the email comes through, it'll look a bit like this. It's very brand neutral. It is from Microsoft, so it's going to have their logo and things like that. There we go. We've got a bit of our text. Um, as well as a bit of a summary of that news article that we can go to, or we could go directly to the SharePoint site using this button. So I would recommend you consider using that newsletter, especially as part of your overarching adoption plan for your intranet. So thank you for watching that video. This is part one of a three-part series. In part two and three, we're going to dive deeper into talking about an intranet. So we're going to be talking about adding imagery to a homepage, using the events web part for promoting events, as well as creating page content, building out knowledge bases and linking to navigations, including building out a mega menu. So we're gonna talk about the benefits of a mega menu and how to build one, as well as applying your own branded colors. So we're gonna talk a bit about the standard colors SharePoint offers, but also how you can apply bespoke colors over the top by creating a color theme. Um, and then in part three, we're going to talk about designing department sites. So now we're going to shift our focus from thinking about the internet homepage and be thinking about the department sites which build up this internet. We're going to be looking at the benefits of inheriting hub site as well as how to associate a hub site as well as automating the department templates in terms of once we've created the, our department site, how do we use that as a template to create more department sites. We're going to look at how to build out a frequently asked question section in order to lower the amount of questions that a department's receiving, building out that concept of a single source of truth further, and building it with a nice sort of accordion user experience. We're then going to be talking about rolling up content. So from this department site, how do we roll up news? How do we roll up documents onto that hub site? And then finally, we're going to talk about how to give others access. So once we've created out our intranet, 
How do we give people access to the department sites, the, the internet homepage? What are SharePoint permissions and how to give individuals as well as everyone else access to this? I'm also going to be talking about how to use um, my uh, priority Q&A inside of um, my YouTube channel and how to, you could suggest more videos in the future. Joining my, the membership of my channel couldn't be easier. There is a link inside of the description of this video which is going to take you to my membership area. Now, my membership is one of the cheapest around because I really just want to share the love with you guys and create content that everyone um, can uh, access. Um, so it's 99p um, a month. Um, of that, um, I actually get about 70p because it goes to YouTube. Um, but it means we can build out more of a community. As part of the, the, this, you'll get some loyalty badges, which at the moment, these are just the default YouTube ones, but I am going to get some cool, funky ones created that you can use inside of the chats. Um, there's gonna be priority replies area inside of um, my membership area. So as part of the follow on membership videos, I'm gonna show you where that is, how you can use this to get quick answers and detailed Q and A's from myself, as well as accessing the exclusive um, members only videos as well. So in terms of part two and part three of this series, you will need to subscribe to uh, the, the membership of this channel in order to uh, see part two and three. Um, but I really do appreciate you watching this video. Um, at a minimum, if you can subscribe to my channel, that will really help us grow. Um, like videos uh, and stay tuned for weekly content, uh, which comes out as well. Um, but as I say, um, to get access to the more detailed um, videos, um, you will need this membership. Um, it will also come with the priority replies, Q and A's, and also I'm looking for people to um, give me ideas for video series that you might like to see, or any challenges that you have with SharePoint that can help you solve. I can create some more video content for that. Thank you very much for watching.